All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our well-being workshop tonight. My name is Jenna Wood, and I am one of the dietitians here with the Giant Company. Uh, today, we're going to be debunking detox. So you've probably heard about detoxes, whether on the news or on social media or wherever, um, or maybe more scientifically and medically, you know, detoxes in that way, which we're going to kind of steer clear of talking about. But we're going to kind of talk about it from a myth busting perspective, uh, because I think a lot of people kind of want us to believe in this concept of detoxing. And, you know, there's not a whole lot of science and research backing all of that stuff up. So I want you to just do things that are based in science and make sure that you're not spending money where you don't need to. Because who wants to do that? I'm gonna go on. So today's topic overview, we're gonna define detox, toxins, toxicants very, very briefly. Then we're going to really focus on, you know, our body's detoxification system. I guarantee you, you know what those things are. I'm going to have you guess them as we get closer. And then, you know, I'm really against a lot of these like detox claims and you'll see that in the slides. But of course, there are things that we can do to support our body's natural detoxification system. You know, we could be doing things to help our bodies, right? So that's not a myth. So we'll talk about those too. So now what is a toxin? Now, of course, I have water here and I'll explain why. But when we hear about toxins, toxicants is another word. So they're kind of similar, but different things. You know, they're very loosely defined often when you see these claims. And they're sometimes referring to actual things that are harmful, right? Things like pollutants, which we come into contact with all the time, just living, driving our cars, breathing. You know, there's things in water, various places. So Absolutely. Those are, you know, things we should avoid, but sometimes are unavoidable in all instances. Various types of chemicals, whether they're natural or synthetic. Um, I think a lot of times these detox claims are looking towards this natural fallacy, which is that, you know, if something is natural, it must be safe and healthy. And that couldn't be further from the truth. You know, there are naturally occurring things that are very harmful, whether it be botulism or alpha toxins or various things that occur in nature. So just because something is synthetic doesn't make it bad. Just because something is natural doesn't make it good. Of course, heavy metals and then various additives. Again, some can be good. Some are not so good. Then, oops, there we go. So online and in media, the word toxin often is defined very differently than in science and sometimes not really defined well at all. You'll likely hear or have heard claims, uh, you know, that some of these ingredients listed here or others are things that we need to detox ourselves of. We need to go on a cleanse because these things aren't good for us. So you may have heard it in relation to things like gluten or grains, MSG, dairy, beans, because they contain lectins or other anti-nutrients. And I say anti-nutrients with hand quotes because anti-nutrients are real things, you know, lectins, are problematic if that's all we're consuming and we're consuming a high quantity of them in their raw form. But nobody's eating raw kidney beans. We cook them. So again, we're, you know, we see these claims and things because a lot of times they'll have like a scientific sounding, you know, description. It's like, oh, well, that must be true. Like I don't know a lot about it, but that person sounds like they do. They have, you know, they sound like they know what they're talking about but often it's led by false information. And then, you know, sugar, sugar alternatives, a lot of these things you're gonna see claims that we need to detox our body of. But really, truly anything, even water, can be toxic at the right dose. And I don't mean right meaning good, but right being, you know, that threshold where it goes from being a tolerable, acceptable limit to being really harmful. Because you probably remember there's various things out there. People were drinking a lot of water. I feel like it was on social media somewhere. And, you know, you can very much harm yourself that way. So anything can be problematic and toxic at the right dose. Now, there are various detox scams and claims out there. And this is just a small handful of them. You know, I can't possibly talk about all of them. But you will often see people who refer to themselves as influencers 
claiming that you need to detox. You know, the only person you should really be listening to if you need to detox is probably a doctor, probably in an emergent state. Uh, but of course, you know, there are doctors out there, people like Dr. Oz, who promote these kind of pseudoscientific detox because there's a lot of money behind it. Because a lot of these detox and cleansing claims come from things like selling laxatives and diuretics and enemas. None of those sound fun. Uh, vitamin and mineral or related supplements. So that's why I kind of have the picture here on the side. Various types of teas or juices or cleanses, you know, things that you typically drink. And that's all you're drinking, you know, and all you're consuming. You're not eating, you know, solid food. Fasting. And I do have an asterisk here because there is some research behind fasting um, being somewhat beneficial. And of course, people fast for religious reasons and other reasons. So this is fasting more so for the whole like cleanse and detox mentality. There are other reasons too. Uh, only eating raw foods. You know, there's some claims that cooked foods are, you know, problematic. So we need to only be eating raw foods. And then anything that's a super restrictive diet. So things that cut out whole food groups, whole nutrients. All, and again, some of those things like drinking juices, you're going to be cutting out huge food groups, which is problematic in and of itself. So these can be very detrimental to our health. And I'll talk about a couple of reasons on the next slide. Um, lobster, raw food. Uh, so not only are most of these unnecessary and very expensive, but they can also be potentially quite harmful. So, you know, they have these grand claims that they're going to make you feel like a million bucks and you're going to feel better than you ever have. But often that's really not true. They just want you to buy something. But why are they harmful? So like I kind of mentioned, they can lack very essential nutrients and eliminate entire food groups. So if you're just drinking juices, like you're doing a juice cleanse, you're very likely not consuming enough protein or fat. And, you know, we'll talk about fats not being, you know, the only thing we want to consume every day necessarily, but we need fat and we need protein. So when we're just drinking juice, we're getting high amounts of sugar and that's it. They're not long-term solutions. And, you know, if you've been to any of our presentations by our dietitians, we talk about, you know, things that you can do long-term. Tiny little changes that you're going to make and not stick to aren't really going to help you. They're just going to be a tiny blip and then you're going to go off and do the next thing. We want to instill, you know, healthy habits that we can maintain for years because that's what's going to be beneficial. You really often can't do any of these cleanses and detox long-term because you'll probably end up in the hospital because some of the other things I'm going to mention. For certain people, like not everybody might be predisposed to, you know, eating disorders and disordered eating, but these cleanses and things in and of themselves can lead to those things. You know, if you're very preoccupied in what you can and cannot consume, that is disordered eating in and of itself. So definitely uh, something to be concerned uh, about. I do see, so some people say to avoid soy, but as a vegetarian, that would limit my choices. We will talk, I, I think I talk about soy just very briefly in one of the slides, so I will get to that for sure. Uh, so impaired mental function. So like I have here, kind of she's dizzy, she might be confused, have fatigue, irritability. This could be various reasons. You know, you're not getting all the nutrients you need. If you're doing a juice cleanse, you might be getting, you know, tons of sugar that your body metabolizes super quickly. So you have a high blood sugar spike and then you crash. So lots of reasons for uh, some of these symptoms here. Dehydration and electrolyte imbalances, especially again, any of the cleanses, but also things where you might be trying things that work as a laxative or a diuretic or any of those things. They're there, you know, those should only be taken under the guidance of a doctor or, you know, when you have a condition that requires it, those things taken just on a whim or as a supplement, very dangerous. We don't want to be dehydrated. That's definitely not beneficial for our health. They can lead to impaired gut health and function, which we know, you know, improving our gut health and function is so vital. So when we cut out all of these essential food groups, like you're doing a juice cleanse, you're probably not getting a lot of fiber. You're not eating this balanced diet. 
probably going to lead to some issues there too. Slowed metabolism, your body's thinking, oh, wow, you know, I'm used to getting X amount of calories and nutrients a day. Now I'm only getting this. I need to slow all my processes down. I need to become more efficient at doing things and not burning as many calories. So it really often does the exact opposite of what people want. Not everyone does a detox to lose weight. That's just one reason people might. Um, but, you know, it could be a side effect. And side effects aren't necessarily bad or good. But if, you know, you lose weight when you're on a cleanse, regardless if that's the point, you will likely regain that weight plus sometimes more when you stop whatever that detox or cleanse is. And as I kind of mentioned or alluded to, they're expensive. That's the whole point of them is they want you to buy them. They want to make money. So they're going to drain your wallet super quickly. And someone says, they keep drinking water. Yeah, we'll talk about hydration. Now, what about the body's natural detoxification system? So if we want to avoid, you know, those cleanses and all of those claims out there, the supplements, what should we be doing, right? Well, our body is pretty well equipped to eliminate toxins and toxicants and all of these things we come into contact with and things that we develop. You know, we'll talk about um, free radicals and things like that. So our body just, it's one of the many functions that we have, right? We wouldn't have survived as a species if we weren't able to combat these toxins in our environment. What do you think are some of our, you know, organs, organ systems that work towards our detoxification process? I'd love to see in our chat. I'm sure you guys know. Yeah, my liver. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the big one. What else? Kidneys. Yep, liver and kidneys for sure. Yep, perfect. Absolutely. So liver and kidneys, 100%. Liver, definitely the powerhouse. That is what's doing the bulk of our detoxification, whether that comes from things that we don't want to you know, come in contact with in the first place, things like pollutants, but also the liver's metabolizing things that we consume. Um, you know, that we want to consume, whether it be alcohol or different things, but also medications we take. Our liver is so vital. Then our kidneys. So there are certain things that either the liver then processes and we need to get out so we can go to the bathroom uh, and get them out through the kidneys or through our digestive system. So, you know, we have solid waste as well that can really um, get rid of some of our, you know, things that we've consumed and come into contact with. Our lungs, um, you know, breathing in and out, not as efficient as things like the liver, but that is part of the process as well. And then our skin. So a lot of times, and I didn't even include them um, in the list of, you know, detox claims and things, because often you'll see recommendations of saunas and things that help you excessively sweat and all that kind of stuff. That's really not releasing toxins. That's not just, that's not the way our bodies function. You will lose sweat and you'll lose salt and electrolytes and things like that, but you're not losing toxins in that way. Um, but the skin is a really good barrier against toxins in our environment. So I did include it because that's important. We do want to keep things away. You know, the way we breathe, we have um, mucous membranes and things and, you know, hair in our nose and things like that to keep certain things out too. So our bodies have evolved to be quite skilled at doing just this. So Absolutely. <laughs> Liver, kidneys, poop. I love it. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> Definitely. Your body really does not require special diets, cleanses, expensive supplements to eliminate toxins. If you know you need to detox, a lot of times what I describe to people is if one of these systems is failing, you know, like let's say the best example would be, you know, you're on dialysis. So you have kidney issues, whether it's chronic kidney disease or an acute problem, you're on dialysis because our kidneys are so vital for, you know, taking out byproducts that we made and things like that. If our kidneys aren't functioning properly, we literally need to be hooked up to a machine to help them function and help our blood filter out things that we don't want, you know, building up in us. So, you know, there's very few instances where we would need to do something extreme to help our body systems. But things like cleanses and diets really aren't that. You know, there's medical interventions that can possibly help depending on what our issue is. 
We can, however, you know, I don't want to be all doom and gloom. We can do our best to support and lighten the toxic load, you know, so eliminating some of the things we come into contact with so that our body's natural detoxification system works its best. You know, we want to support it. We want to make sure it's working tip top shape so that we can live our best, right? So there are some things we can do, and we're just going to talk about a few of them today. So how can we support our body's, you know, natural system, natural process? We're going to focus on hydration. So the ones, there's going to be a couple in italics. Those are the ones we're going to focus on because they're more nutrition focused. We want to eat a balanced, nutritious diet. We want to exercise regularly. I'm not going to go too in depth with that one, but definitely something we want to do. We want to get plenty of sleep. So, so many processes and things regenerate and we just live our best and are able to do all of the things we're going to talk about when we are well rested. We want to limit alcohol consumption. And this is definitely one um, we will focus on a little bit because really research is coming out about just how harmful alcohol is, even in small, small doses. So we're going to talk, touch on that. And then quitting smoking, not something we're going to focus on a lot, but smoking, it definitely introduces our body to so many toxicants, you know, that are very hard for our body to get rid of. So if you are still a smoker, that would be probably my first step and recommendation there. Our first one we're going to talk about today is hydration. So I love kind of weird thing to love, very strange. Um, but, you know, like the urine chart is a really good way to gauge your hydration status. It's not perfect because there's a lot of reasons that your urine might be various. I don't want to say colors. You don't want to be lots of colors. Some medications might make your urine different colors. Um, but by and large, you can tell how dilute or concentrated your urine is when you go to the bathroom, right? So well hydrated, you want kind of more in that not, you know, there's not a lot of color there. You don't want it to be completely clear because then you might be a little overhydrated. because remember too much of a good thing isn't always a good thing. So you want it kind of pale yellow. Perfect. Then as you can kind of see the darker it gets from like, you know, darker lemonade to almost like apple juice, that might be, you know, cause for, oh, wow, have I had any fluids today? Whether it be in the form of food or beverages. So just a kind of interesting thing to gauge. But again, you know, if you take a multivitamin or something that has a lot of water soluble vitamins, your urine might have more of like a neon color to it because, you know, if we don't need it, that's where it goes. So just something to keep in mind. But we do want to stay hydrated as much as possible because water is needed to transport waste products through urination, defecation, breathing, sweating. Again, we're not getting rid of tons of toxins through sweating, but we do need to sweat and we need water to be able to do it. An adequate fluid intake. And I underlined fluid because this doesn't just mean water. This means fluid that we're getting from all beverages including coffee, including milk, including all of those things, um, and the water that's naturally occurring in foods. So, you know, watermelon and other fruits and vegetables and things like soups and ice creams, things that are fluid or have some sort of fluid inc are included in that number because that number is kind of high, right? It's a little shocking, especially when you hear like 64 ounces or whatever. This is, you know, optimal and not everyone needs that much either. So that's one of the reasons I kind of recommend going slow and, you know, using your body as a gauge. So if you're not drinking enough water today and you know that because you barely have any water throughout the day, that just start slow um, and monitor those symptoms of, you know, or, you know, signs of, you know, your urine color. Some people, depending on age, you know, you'll be able to see if your skin is elastic, it should bounce back pretty quickly. Um, if your skin's lost elasticity for other reasons like aging, you know, this might not work as well, but how do you feel mentally? You know, all those types of things, because sometimes even slight dehydration can lead to fatigue, headaches, confusion. So definitely something to try if you have any of those symptoms. The color chart's great. Yes. Yeah. 64 ounces. Great to strive for because also, again, you're getting fluid 
from those foods and things that we're not always counting. So this is why it's total fluid intake and not just water intake. Water intake, that 64 ounce mark is probably a great place for most people to hit if you're consuming foods that are high in fluid like fruits and vegetables. A lot of us aren't getting enough fruits and vegetables. So therefore, you know, you may need to drink a little more water. So very personalized and there's tons of health conditions that would change what your hydration needs are too. So keep that in mind as well. Oops, okay. Striving for balance in our diet is important too. Um, you know, it is true. Excessive amounts of any one thing can cause problems. I mentioned it with water, but really it goes for any food. We don't want our diet to consist of just one thing. We do also want to avoid high intakes of things like caffeine, alcohol, sugar, fried foods, salty foods. You know, we want to have a balance, but those are things, you know, we definitely want to moderate our intake of. If you think you have an intolerance or an allergy to something, get it formally tested. And I don't mean those food sensitivity tests. I mean, going to an allergist, going to a dietitian, talking through, you know, your symptoms and all of those things and getting a genuine test done. Cause there's also a lot of scams out there with, you know, food sensitivity testing. So you don't want to eliminate foods that you don't need to, because they often are very nutritious. So you know, do this under the care of a physician or a dietitian. And, you know, we're all guilty of this at any point in our lives, but, you know, sometimes it's just human nature to look for a quick fix instead of making small habit forming changes, right? It's easier. But, you know, we don't always want to focus on what we can take away. We want to focus on what we can add to our diets, right? So if we're not drinking enough water, that's an easy add. If we're not eating enough fruits and vegetables, eat them in ways that make sense for you to eat um, and adding balance to our diets. Instead of, you know, turning to supplements and cleanses, you know, we aren't always really good at focusing on the basics, you know, like, like hydration, like consuming enough fruits and vegetables and fiber. So instead of going to the extreme, which can sound, I don't know, exciting sometimes because yeah, some of these things aren't always exciting, you know? Proper nutrition, not always, you know, the most exciting piece out there, but not every part of our life is. So we want to strive for balance instead of the extreme. Some of those things that we can do, we want to decrease our salt intake. I'm sure you've heard it from us. You'll probably hear it again, but it's one of the best things we really can do when we are over consuming sodium. And I have a picture here because any salt counts, whether it's pink Himalayan, kosher, table salt, they all count towards our sodium intake. None of them are better than the other. High salt intake can lead to fluid retention, which can make it difficult for our kidneys to eliminate waste through urine because we're holding on to that fluid. Our body doesn't want to get rid of it. So that can make it really hard. And we don't want to make it harder. So we want to reduce our intake of highly processed and salty foods as much as possible. You know, and we've talked about different options of, you know, choosing lower sodium, unsalted things, just making those small swaps. Again, we want baby steps. We don't want huge life changes. Additionally, and again, this is depending on if you've ever been told otherwise, um, but we want to increase the intake of foods that are rich in potassium. So that's things like vegetables, such as potatoes. Potatoes have like the most potassium. Bananas get some, you know, I don't know who marketed them, but potatoes have more. Things like beans, greens, fruit, like prunes, oranges, and bananas, they do have a lot. Uh, and other things like yogurt, clams, soy. See, I mentioned I was going to talk about soy. Those are fantastic ways to get more potassium because our body kind of works in this homeostasis, like checks and balances, we often eat too much sodium and not enough potassium, and therefore we're kind of off balance. So trying to increase our potassium intake, unless you have a heart condition or kidney condition, is a really good place to start too. Additionally, so we want to limit our alcohol intake. And this is the hardest one for a lot of people because it is so ingrained in our culture and like a lot of cultures. But our liver metabolizes about 90% of the alcohol we ingest. And as we said, the liver is the powerhouse of our detoxification system, which is why we're, you know, detoxing from the alcohol there. Alcohol can damage our liver. I'm sure you know this. 
um, but through various reasons and pathways. So through fat accumulations, so if you've ever heard of fatty liver, through inflammation, through scarring. So there's various stages. Um, some of the reason this occurs, so it can occur due to the breakdown. So when alcohol, it has to be quickly metabolized because it is such a toxicant to our bodies. Um, but it is broken down often into, not often, it is broken down into acetaldehyde, uh, which is a highly reactive and toxic byproduct. So we break alcohol or ethanol down into this and it needs to be further broken down, but we need to get rid of it. And the breakdown of alcohol also creates these things called reactive oxygen species, which I'm going to talk about in our next slide as well. All of these things can create that damage. Oh, I can see someone gave a thumbs up. Uh, this damage will prevent the liver from functioning properly. So, you know, when you drink other alcohol or when, you know, we need our liver to detox all of those things we mentioned, whether it be medications or pollutants we come into contact with. So if we're overly consuming alcohol, we're damaging our body's innate detox system. So really we want to strive to reduce our alcohol intake as much as humanly possible. Less is best. None really is best. We always recommend not starting drinking if you don't currently for, you know, quote unquote, potential benefits. More and more research, even research that's come out very recently, like this year, is really showing that there's not a whole lot of benefit to even small quantities of alcohol, like we once thought. You know, research and science evolves and we learn more and more. They even found that people who consume more than 25 grams of alcohol a day, which is less than two standard drinks, have increased risk of all-cause mortality. So definitely, like, I know it's doom and gloom, but I think you should be informed. And again, when it relates to detox, this is something really concerning and something we can do instead of, you know, leaning towards supplements and cleanses. There's options, again, just striving to reduce your intake from whatever it is now to less, but there's so many options now. I think after COVID, people realized their alcohol intake was slightly too high and they were looking for alternatives. So whether it be non-alcoholic beverages, which we sell in our stores, or making mocktails, um, you know, maybe one day we could have a series about mocktails because there's a lot of great options out there. And, you know, you can even add benefit from fruits and vegetables and different things to make this um, more palatable, right? <laughs> So if one drink, one drinks a drink two to four times a year only and no more than six to eight ounces a time, this shouldn't affect one. No. So again, yeah, there's going to be instances just like in terms of moderation and balance um, that, you know, you're going to have alcohol and that's perfectly fine. And yeah, when it's so spread out like that, it's much less likely to cause a problem. Um, but yeah. I think it's definitely something to consider if your intake is higher. Uh, one of my last sections, since I know it is getting close to 7.30, um, so antioxidant-rich foods. So antioxidants, you've probably heard of them before, but they can help protect our cells against damage that are caused by molecules called free radicals. So like I mentioned on the previous slide about alcohol, when it's broken down into these reactive oxygen species, that's part of it you know, that can be free radical damage right there. Oxidative stress is a phenomenon that results from excessive production of these free radicals. Oxidative stress occurs just by existing, you know, but there are things that we do, things we come into contact with, things we consume like alcohol that can increase our, um, you know, oxidative stress. Not all oxidative stress is necessarily bad. You know, we get oxidative stress or, you know, that occurs when we exercise, when we need to exercise. So there are certain things that we do that are gonna cause it, but our body is pretty good at reversing it and we can help by consuming things that are rich in antioxidants. Examples of antioxidant include vitamins, things like vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium, lycopene, lutein, polyphenols, phytoestrogens, coenzyme Q10, and many more. So it's like somebody asked in the chat earlier, you know, people, there's still so much myth and misconception out there about soy foods because they contain phytoestrogens. And previously, and some, you know, through some not great science and research, 
people were afraid of these phytoestrogens. They thought, oh, estrogen, that's bad. Estrogen can lead to breast cancer and different things. But phytoestrogens are different. If anything, they can help, you know, block the absorption and, you know, utilization of some actual estrogen and therefore can be really helpful at being protective against cancers and protective of our heart health and all these other things. So people who are saying that soy is bad often are going off of really bad research. And yes, there are better soy products than others. You know, we don't want super, super processed soy products like protein isolates and things like that, but tofu and tempeh and miso and soy milk and edamame and all of those things are fantastic. So if you're eating whole forms of soy, you're getting lots of antioxidants antioxidant rich foods. So absolutely. And things like the, um, what do they call Flax seeds that were on the previous slide too. To do this, we want to eat a wide variety of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, and seeds, other lean proteins, things like fatty fishes. So I say lean, but fatty fishes are included in there. Things like salmon and trout and tuna. We want to eat a balance of them. The most important piece to this though, is that we want to consume antioxidants through food, not through supplements. So if someone's ever told you, you need to take an antioxidant supplement, you saw it online somewhere, do not do it. Antioxidant supplements have a very dubious history um, and actually are known to cause harm in people especially people who are looking to use it to help prevent certain things like cancers and heart disease. And antioxidant supplements can interfere with medications. Antioxidant supplements can interfere with cancer treatment. So there's a lot of reasons why we don't wanna take supplement forms. And remember, more is not always better when it comes to certain things like this. So you know, an antioxidant supplement might have too much of an antioxidant and maybe not even the right form. And that is because one, this is a pretty new science. Like nutrition is fairly new when it comes to sciences, but what we have found is really, and this goes for most foods, is that these antioxidants likely work better in a matrix of the whole food. So, you know, you can't just take the whole food and distill it down into a powder. So like these green powders out there or an antioxidant, you know, pill or powder and think it's going to have the same benefit because there's likely things you're missing. And it could be, you know, this antioxidant and this antioxidant work together synergistically to provide the benefit. So if you're just distilling, you know, you're going to put a little vitamin E, a little selenium in this, you know, product, you might be missing whatever was actually causing the benefit. So steer clear of the supplements, try to consume all your antioxidants through whole foods as much as possible. Dietary fiber, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on because, well, I feel like the last couple months we've talked a lot about fiber, but it is important in terms of detoxification because it promotes the removal of solid waste. So we need to go to the bathroom to eliminate waste. We need fiber to be able to do it. We get it from plants. That's the only place we get fiber, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds, eat the skins of those things. They have a ton of fiber. Recommended intake, about 25 grams per day for women or smaller people, 38 grams per day for men, larger people. The actual recommendation is about 14 grams of fiber per thousand calories you consume. So it's a range. If you don't eat enough now, this goes the same with like drinking fluids, go slow, incorporate the fiber slowly and make sure you're pairing it with fluids. So that's a really great place to start too. You know, if you want to increase your hydration, increase your fiber, you want to do them concurrently anyway. So that can be a really fun place to start. So to recap, there is no solid evidence to support detox diets, cleanses, supplements, all of those things that you probably see on late night TV, in the newspaper, online. They all are really just often scams. And if anything, they can be quite harmful and really not provide the benefit that you're looking for. What we want to do is we want to focus on hydration, on eating a balanced diet, which again, we know is not the most exciting thing to hear, but it really is long-term what is best. We want to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So trying to quit smoking, reduce our alcohol intake, 
consume foods that are high in antioxidants, fiber, and fluid. That's what's really going to support our body's inherent detoxification system, you know, our liver, our kidneys, our colon, all of these things. So our body's processes work the way they're supposed to and support the healthiest you possible. And that is all I have. And we're going to get to any questions that we have in our chat. I want to thank you.